All right, thank you. I might wander. Oh, sorry, that was just one. Um, oh, oh, sorry. We'll get there. Get close to it. That was probably in a separate one. There's no other slides on the side. Google Slides, everyone. <laughs> 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 this is the cloud. Yes, this is the haunted cloud. Did it show up in a separate tab or window? Or? Yeah, but it's great. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, one more. Hold on. There's always something, right? There is always Always. Can you mine it, Brian? I can. There it is. Look at that. We've got pictures. Nailed it. Woo! Okay. Um, okay, so I'm Brian Bartenbrook, and uh, same topic, different angle. All right, so we're going to come at this from a little different way. Uh, saving lives before they were ever in danger. We're going to talk about relationship building and something that's never been clearer to me. Um, so this is, this is different. This is a, a realization that came to me in, in what was quite literally the biggest disaster in, in that region. Um, at least in recorded history. So, let's go on. Uh, oh, you know what? I, I do need to give Dave Pearson credit on this. He helped out quite a lot with this information. Um, why are we talking about this? Well, first I'm going to start by saying that I, I'm talking about work that I didn't do. So, we're talking about things that, that people like Dave in our office, they went out and did. People like Becky. People like Gerilyn and Steve and half the people in here, whether you're weather service or not, you go out and you make relationships with people and it has a payoff, a big payoff in this scenario. Um, I, you know, this is again, this, this is an image uh, from the flood. This is actually up in North Platts area. This is a dam that broke, uh, just completely catastrophic. Uh, the Spencer Dam, as you might hear it. All of the images throughout this presentation are actually from the flood event, one way or another. Um, let's go on next. Let's talk about relationship building from my perspective. And we just had the Sue meeting. And, and I feel like when I talk about this, what's going through a lot of the minds of the scientists is what the heck are you talking about, Barge and Brooke? You psycho. <laughs> science is where it's at. All right? We are a science based agency. You are a science and operations officer. You're talking about building relationships and skipping slides. <laughs> And that just doesn't work. We have to have the science. And you're right. You're right. Because if we don't have a good forecast, then any relationship we build is worthless. Nobody wants to be our friend. You know, why bother? So we do have to be really good at that. Really, really good. And I think we are. So that's good news. But what happens if you don't have anybody to listen? Nobody important. Equally worthless. Again, why bother doing a forecast? if nobody's paying attention. So it's got to be good. In this scenario, where do you think that sand came from? Well, I don't know. It didn't magically appear. The sandbags. How about the hundreds of people? Hundreds, all the way down. I know where the water came from because I'm a scientist. <laughs> where did these people come from? These came from pre-positioning of resources because somebody believed our forecast. Right? I mean, probably an emergency manager was involved. Emergency managers get a lot of our, our talk in the National Weather Service. But this could be anybody. This could be probably many people believing your forecast because you have demonstrated you have the skills and they have built trust in you. This is important. This wasn't done this day. This was done months, months ahead. Um, and it's, again, something that has never been more clear to me, the importance of this. So, so please open your eyes if, if you haven't thought about it in this way before and kind of wrap it in this other direction. Think about what you might take back home. <coughs> Excuse me. Dramatic pause. <laughs> These are relationships with your key decision makers, and these are important, we talk about these a lot. But it goes beyond this, and now as we skip ahead to this slide, 
You also have relationships in places like the State Emergency Operations Center, where we were staffed for, I don't know, 10 days, and we continue to provide briefings for two more weeks after that. <clears throat> this is actually an exercise that happened afterward, where Weather Service is also embedded in there, which is great. Um, during the event, this is the actual Nebraska EO, State EOC, there were way more people in there at this time. There were decision makers from everywhere. And if you remember, for those of you who were at the exercise yesterday, uh, the Emergency Operations Center is a, a management area. It's where you're getting resources. You're, you're not necessarily doing anything, but you are making it possible for people to do the very important things. I was there for just one day. It was, it was very rewarding because I got to brief the National Guard on flight conditions for hay drops to, to feed their cattle. Um, I got to speak with the uh, Corps of Engineers about uh, river flows and potential dam and levee failures. You know, where else do you get to actually talk to them in person? That In this time, you are continuing to foster those relationships. Take advantage, even if it's a quiet day. Uh, two weeks ago, I showed up in Pottawatomie County and uh, hung out with an EOC that was super boring. I mean, I'll be honest, there was, there was a huge event going on, and so they had the EOC activated with, with people to help if needed, tens of thousands of vulnerable people, and nothing ever happened. It was great. And, and so we sat there and we just talked, and uh, I think the proper term is BS'd um, <laughs> in that group. And uh, we had a good time, and we built those relationships, and they know me, they know me as the weather service. They might know you as University of Nebraska Emergency Management Department. They might know you as, as whatever, but that's uh, one more point I'll just make while I'm talking about it. Make sure they know you as the entity you represent, not just you, you know? Uh, if if uh, Pottawatomie County texts me and I'm on vacation, well, that doesn't do much good. So it, you have to represent your agency, whatever that might be. Uh, another one, let's talk about just local experts in general. This is the road closure map. Department of Transportation was an excellent, uh, excellent partner to have. And I want to say too that there are lots of relationships yet to build in Omaha. These are demonstrations of what we have done and what we need to do. Um, we're talking about the Corps of Engineers. If you want to know about river flooding, you better talk with your Corps of Engineers partners. The DOT, the the Natural Resource District in our area was huge, and Dave Pearson, the relationships he's built with our local natural resource districts are, are amazing. They still didn't tell us the levy group, but they, they were busy. They were busy, I'll cut them some slack. They did tell us a lot of other useful information. Uh, state departments, uh, you know, Mike Moritz from Hastings and I, we go talk about smoke with the Department of Health. You know, that, these are random things, but they're, they're high impact. Uh, the USGS, the county departments, so many more. I mean, you, you can go on and on, and one of the questions I hear a lot is, who do I go talk to? What do I do? I need to go build relationships and DSS and blah, 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 blah. And just, just go out and ask people what they need. Go, go start with somebody and say, who else can benefit? And, and that's how you learn. That's how you learn things like this. Uh, Dave shared with me the other day, he went to a, an after action meeting, and he found out that uh, the Platte County Emergency Manager uh, was trying to do water rescues, or at least conduct, organize, orchestrate, whatever it is you do in that stage. Um, and there was so much debris and sand in the water that normal outboard motors would not work after a while. We got clogged up, and the boats had died. Game over. There is one man in Platte County, he now knows, who has a special outboard motor and can rescue, and, or at least use his boat. Uh, any time in any water conditions. There's a lot of sand out there. Um, he didn't have that resource then, he has that resource now. This isn't a weather service resource by any means, but it's a good example of building that relationship at an after action meeting uh, that will pay dividends in the future. Let's talk about same team experts. How well do you know your local river forecast center? You should, because they're making some big decisions and you need to communicate them if you're in the weather service. Or if you're not in the weather service, you still need to understand that forecast and what might be going into it. And, and frankly, you can talk to the River Forecast Center if you've got big issues and need to do that. How about your neighboring forecast offices? Hastings, I, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think we know you quite well now at this point. Uh, this isn't the first time we've backed each other up, but it is the first time of this nature. 
Um, but in every other forecast office, in other forecasters, in private industry even, let's talk about broadcast meteorologists. How well do you know them when you issue a flash flood emergency for a highly populated area that you can give them the message that they can give to people? And it's not just the, there's a flash flood emergency for Fremont. It's the, you really need to watch out if you're in this area of Fremont, in this portion, in this time, in this information. Information is everything in these events. It saves lives. How well do people trust you that you can tell them those, those things and they'll believe you? Aviation Weather Center, uh, Becky had the highlighted uh, thing there, uh, they're going to drop dynamite. If you want to see a nervous pilot, send them up into 50 mile per hour winds with a load of dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> you want to provide the weather information for that flight and they want you to provide it as well. So see what you can do. Aviation Weather Center has some great resources for helicopter pilots. Uh, this is good to know beforehand. Well, I'm going to take another dramatic pause and let you read that. Why build relationships? Let me tell you, everyone's a weather expert. There's one time I saw those fuzzy clouds and it rained five inches that night. <laughs> New moon starts tonight. Anybody have a father-in-law? I, I do. And uh, he believes in moon phases. And uh, we honestly, I, I give him a really hard time. He's a farmer and, and we have a good time back and forth. Uh, he probably still swears that Hastings is a way better weather forecast too because they're just upstream of his farm. <laughs> <laughs> and they might be right. <laughs> One weather service. Um, yep. Let's see here. Uh, the dogs, you know, my, my dog's shedding a lot today so it's gonna rain. You know, this is the kind of stuff that people go out there and they looked at their phone and they looked at their radar and they believe what they see wherever they see it. And they're gonna check 14 resources no matter what. But I want you, whoever you may be, to be the most trusted resource for that important person. Be the trusted resource and they will trust you first. They're still gonna look everywhere else too because strength in numbers, but they're going to trust you the most. It's a lot like this. I talked about what do we do? This is an actual bridge. Again, these are all pictures that are really from the event. Uh, not a good bridge. Uh, I think it's been rebuilt. Like Becky said, that we just had the last road out of Omaha finally open. Um, take our expertise and learn their needs. I don't, we don't know who they are a lot of times. We sure don't know who, what their needs are. Go out there and say hi. And just say, what can I do for you? Or better yet, what can my agency do for you? And that is how you find out. They might not know at that time. It might be, oh, we do river forecasts. Huh, that could be useful. Um, you gotta communicate, you gotta talk with people, you gotta meet people face to face. Like, there's just no substitution for face to face. You can do virtual eventually, but, but just go talk to people. And it's, it's not easy for all of us, we're scientists, I get it. Introverted, it, it rings through all of us at our deepest level a lot of times. Don't worry about it. Let's go out and say hi, they're gonna appreciate it. What you really need, again, is that trust. How do you convince someone who has no previous experience with you that this river, which has existed since the beginning of their time, is going to be three, two feet higher than it has ever been before? This is the Missouri River. This, is a, this thing floods a lot. Um, it's it's going to be 46 feet tomorrow. No, it's never done that before. If you have that relationship and they trust you, then you can say it's going to be 46 feet because this. Before this event, and Gerilyn showed some of it, frost depth was impressive, right? Um, seemingly. The, the snowfall, the snow cover, pretty impressive. We had record snow amounts. None of it melted. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't something that's never happened before. A rainfall of one to three inches? Psh, we can do that in 20 minutes in the summer and nobody bats an eye. But when it all comes together, and I'll give Dave a lot of credit at, at our office, Dave Pearson, he went out and he was sending out briefings six weeks in advance, saying, listen, if we get rain on this snowpack, the stuff's gonna wash away. And that's that local expertise, that is the science and the relationships and the communication. And if you think that a good forecast can't build relationships, well, you're wrong. A good forecast is the root of it. And then you go and you actually talk to people about how to get that information better down the road. Make sure I don't run out of time here. 
Um, here I just, that didn't work. Huh. Eh, go on. I'll talk about it, what I remember. There, in, the, in the real slides, I'll, I'll try and share them, make them available. Um, there, there are tips, things to do before. Very useful information. <laughs> before, the, before the event, it, it comes down to meeting people. It comes down to getting out there. It comes down to calling people even and just talking to them. Find, find people who matter. And some, sometimes you go to, again, one person. Maybe you go to State Patrol and they say, you know, you should go talk to the dispatcher. You go to the dispatcher and the dispatcher says, boy, you know who can use this information is so-and-so over here. And so you walk down there and they say, go to DOT and then you walk over there. And before you know it, you've met 3,000 people who have influence over a million people. And, and that's how it works. You, you build this circle, this influence. You go to meetings. You work on the science so that it's good. You show demonstrations of successes in the past and you show them what you can provide. And you ask them what they need and then you try and give it to them. You point them in the right direction. It's, it's a different world than 20 years ago in the weather industry. And, and it's time to embrace it because it matters. Um, that's, that's kind of my overall takeaway here. Uh, again, there are different things here, but uh, we went to ice jam meetings, we went to public meetings, um, just everywhere, just going to meet people. And, and again, I keep using Dave. He's, he's got a lot of extra shifts. He has a lot of days where he can go out and do this stuff. And that's a real benefit because he'll set up a meeting with the NRD and he'll go out and talk to them. And, and it's great. He has great results from that. During the event, power through is the message. Lean hard on those relationships because this is when it comes through. Everybody's stressed out. Everybody's overworked. Don't worry about oversharing information with people. They tend to want it. And you tend to know about it if you have that relationship already. So go for it. Just get out there. Don't worry about calling them again and bugging them. They'll tell you. Stop calling me. I know it's flooding everywhere. There's nothing we can do about it. When you reach that point, then yeah, stop calling them. It's fine. Just, just listen. <laughs> but lean hard on those relationships during the event. Do your best to have a great forecast, great science go into it so that they trust you this time and tomorrow and the next day. After the event, it doesn't end when it's over. We went to a FEMA meeting. There must have been 100 people in the room for, for post-event recovery. Steve was there, Mike was there, we had like uh, Teresa was there, I think we had six weather service people, it was pretty cool. Um, we got to talk for two minutes, it was really good. And, but those two minutes were useful because there's funding coming in at this point. We can get river gauges or at least advocate for them. You can get more information, you can talk to people and you build more relationships there. You talk to people in the row behind you, in the row front of you, and next to you. That's when you do it. You go to these meetings, you go to after action meetings where Maybe weather service or whoever you are doesn't have a spot at this meeting, but you go and you listen. And, and it's good. It's really beneficial. And not to mention just the fact that cleanup has its whole extra weather side of things. It needs support. I, I'm going to blast now because Dr. Gone it and I talked too long. Um, a few things that worked well in the flood. Um, exercises beforehand. We have this engineering group of all people. Who would have thought an engineering private firm they go out and they do exercises and they build levy action plans for these cities. Uh, we've gone to, I don't know, four or five of them, something like that in the months before. These were towns that flooded. These were towns who had levy breaches. These are important things. Be there when they ask. Do, do your best. Scheduling is hard. It's, it's really hard. I get it. That's something that worked well. Public meetings I've talked about a little bit. Being a face there and, and giving information builds public trust as well. <clears throat> And then the after actions, I already covered that a little bit too. These are all things that worked. There are so many things that worked and so many that didn't that, that we need to do better. And now's the time that you prep for that. You, you keep building those relationships. And so at this point, I just wanna throw out a little scenario. I want you to think about it. And think about what you want your role to be, wherever you are, weather service, university, research, what have you. <coughs> so this, this is an actual picture, Stanton County, Nebraska. That's not usually what it looks like. <laughs> That's a river. Notice the waves. Notice everything. Uh, this is not where it happened, but it's indicative. It's a good picture. 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. It issued a blizzard warning for parts of the area that were flooding. <laughs> That's just wrong. We're talking about hypothermic flooding here. So we have a, uh, a group of rescuers go out. 
they're going to go into this, this neighborhood and rescue some people who called. Their house is about to collapse. Seven people, two airboats. Airboats were one of the only ways to get around. Well, in three-foot waves, it doesn't work too well. Capsized one. Actually, they sunk one. And then when they were trying to pick them up, they capsized the other. This is not a good situation. It's dark. Uh, they're trying to figure out how to get to these guys. And then to rescue the people they were trying to get to. Helicopters. You know, at this point, you have decision makers who are going through in their mind, what do we do now? They know it's a bad scenario. So they send out a helicopter. It has to turn back because the weather's too bad. They send out another helicopter, I believe, and if I remember right, I was following along from Kansas City. <clears throat> I believe that one couldn't do it either. Power lines in the way. After an hour in the water, a Black Hawk helicopter <clears throat> from Columbus, Nebraska flies, like we're up to 50 miles, something like that, flies over and is able to pull them out one by one. Now tell me that you don't want to have a role in that forecast for that Black Hawk helicopter. Or maybe to have them call you immediately. Better yet, you're sitting next to them in the EOC as they're trying to decide, what do we send? What do we send to get these heroes out of the water? You want to help. You want to have that relationship that they're going to trust you and go for it. So go out, make the relationships now. And do it now. Go out with vigor. You know, it's going to make a difference. It might not feel like it when you're sitting in the EOC board because there's no weather. But take advantage of it. Do it. Do it. Just go do it, even if you're not comfortable with it. And then work with that science, too, and put it all together. Make it pay. And I, I better stop now. But thank you all very much for listening. So we don't. Uh, maybe one question. That's all we have time for. Uh, so, so building, establish a relationship, build a relationship, sustain the relationship. Relationships are organization to organization, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, how does the WFO, uh, you know, keep track of all this? Do you have a catalog of relationships? Uh, you know, and you know which are sort of strong, which could use some work. How do you how do you keep track of all of it? That's a good question. Uh, ideally, yes. So uh, we do have catalogs of, of these. Uh, we keep track of it. Uh, extra organization in doing such would probably be useful. A standardization of doing such is going to be useful. There are movements to do that. Um, keeping track of it is important because it helps you keep contact and it helps you monitor, like you said, who needs a visit? Who, who should we go reach out to again? And uh, who, who was super useful? You know, you, you follow up after the event and you, you do what you can. You say it's organization to organization, and it is. But make no mistake, these are personal. These are personal as well. And that the personal relationships extend to the organization. That's how you build trust. So you go in as a human, um, a human representative of your agency, and you do that. Yep, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brian.